Hey guys, TJ Lawton here with another video. Today I want to show you some tricks for analog emulation and humanization. And I'm going to show you this without going in and modifying the MIDI by micro amounts or doing the velocity. Because I know a lot of people will be like, oh yeah, do do this and, and do this and it will sound more humans. I think that's those are good tips. You should do those as well. But I want to show you something that's more baked in. So the first thing you want to do is load up a sampler. It could work in simpler as well. I'm not sure. I always use a sampler. This example, we're going to drag in a hi-hat and here's what it sounds like. It's just straight sixteenths. Very static, very robotic, very straight. So I'm going to show you some tricks so you can add some very small fluctuations randomly, add some humanization, analog emulation. So the first thing you want to do is then is come over to the modulation tab and you want to turn on LFO1. You want to make sure it's set to this waveform here, random, and set it to sixteenth notes. And then we've got these three parameters here, volume, panning, and pitch. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to add in random volume, random panning, and random pitch. Uh, this is what's going to give it its fluctuations and make it seem more random. Let's have a little play around and see what it sounds like. And then we can do the same with our panning. So now it's going left and right. And then the pitch. So I wouldn't go completely overboard with this. I wouldn't have the parameters set to more than 20%. I usually set them to about three to 5% per instrument. Maybe that's too much pitch, maybe like 1.5. And this is just gonna add very subtle humanization, very subtle fluctuations. It's gonna make your drums sound more interesting. But let's say that for whatever reason, your you've not got MIDI, you've got audio. I've actually built a rack that uses a stock Ableton plugins. Okay, so now I've got the same hi hat, but I put it in audio. So this is what you want to do if you don't have the MIDI. Let's say you work with audio samples, but you want to add that randomization. So this again was what it sounds like, but now it's an audio. Exact same thing. So here is my randomizer rack. Let's turn it on. So as you can see from the macros I've set up. It's got a gain range. So what this means is like, what is the range? Is it going to go from minus two decibels to plus two decibels? Or is it going to go from minus six to plus six? So you have more of a range to play with. And then it also has a rate of how quickly it jumps between those two things. And this is it's, it's done with random. So it's not a sign way of going. It goes up and down. It's not like that. It's just going to be jotting all over the place. There's also then a macro here for smoothness. So do you want it to jump around jaggedly or do you want it to like transfer from one parameter to the next, which gives it more smooth feeling? So now let's hear what this does with the, the gain. You can see on the utility tool here, it's jumping around like crazy. I can smooth it out and you can see it's now traveling between the parameters. I can set the, the rates so to go faster or slower. Cool. And then let's try the panning. Again, if the smooth is on zero, you can hear it's like all over the place. And the smooth up, it's like, you can see the knob here going pretty man mental. And then let's do it with the, the pitch. So I'm going to leave a link to download this rack in the description so you can download it for free. It's all using Ableton plugins. These LFOs here are from Maxwell Live. I believe they're free. I'll find a link and put it in the description as well as so you can get that as well. I think as long as you have like able to, if you, as long as you have Maxwell Live, you can use these. Um, but before I go, I want to show you one other thing. So here I've designed something called drift modulation. And what this is going to do is essentially offset the hi-hat by a few milliseconds early and later, and it drifts back and forth on a sine wave. You could even set this to random and have it randomly placed. So this is gonna add like random rhythm almost, like it's never gonna hit exactly on the beat. Um, let me show you an example of how this works. So if I take these hi-hats as they are, I duplicate it and I delete the old ones. We've got a comparison. And then one with the modulation on it, I'm gonna freeze and flatten it. As you can see now, the hi-hat is slightly off the grid and it will slowly come back in time. So you can see here it gets really out of time. Like it's like, a, well, not, not really out of time, but you can see that the gap getting bigger. So you can see here, the gap gets smaller again, smaller again. Now it's just like one millisecond. So like, why would you, why would you want to do this? 
exactly. Well, it adds more humanization. So I'll, I'll include I'll include this rack here um, below as well. Again, it just requires a delay unit, as all that all it's doing is shifting the 100% wet delay and shifting the uh, the delay up and down. You might want to compensate for it. For example, it can only go as low as one millisecond. You're going to want to set this to minus one if you want it to come back to being on time. And I recommend you do freeze and flatten it because the CPU usage on this rack is really high. It's crazy. So I'll, I'll include a link to that as well. So you can do that for free. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Thanks.